First of all, the meeting today is being recorded. Um, secondly, in addition to the public testimony uh, that, uh, that is gonna be given today, uh, anyone who's, who's interested in providing written testimony uh, is, is more than welcome to do that. Uh, public testimony um, can be provided uh, via email to spedrule at tea.texas.gov. Um, I have uh, some stuff that I've got to read verbatim, and then we'll begin uh, with the, the, the testimony in the order that uh, the participants have signed in. So please clearly state and spell your full name. If you are representing an organization, please clearly state the name of the organization you are representing. You will have only three minutes to speak. The timer will start after you have stated your name and if applicable, the name of the organization that you're representing. A 30 second time, <clears throat> I beg your pardon. A 30 second warning will be given. At the end of the three minutes, you will be given a signal to stop. Once the stop signal is given, you may complete your sentence and then you must stop. TEA staff will not be responding to your comments today, nor will TEA staff ask or answer any questions. Um, so we will begin with uh, Jolene Foster. And so Mrs. Foster. Um, Hi there, good Friday morning, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Jolene uh, Foster, J-O-L-E-N-E, F-O-S-T-E-R, and I'm the Advocacy Director of the Coalition of Texans with Disabilities. Um, I'll just very briefly provide um, a few comments um, regarding HB 725. Um, so in terms of the procedures for use of restraint and timeout, CPD recommends that um, language be consistent throughout to, um, to modify the language to, in, to include use of restraint so that each use of restraint is being documented and these procedures are, are, are being implemented um, even if there were multiple restraints or consecutive restraints <clears throat> on the same day. We'd also like to, and this is a, 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 some language that was not in the original bill re regarding the observation of students and restraint, We'd like to recommend that that include the observation include the physical demeanor and mental or emotional state um, as observed by a school nurse. Um, if not available, a school-based mental health professional. <clears throat> and then if not available, a third party who is not involved directly or indirectly with the restraint. Uh, and, and those are all the comments I have today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Foster. Is that is that the end of your statement? Yes, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Um, Kelsey Tass. Hi, uh, my name is Kelsey Tice, K-E-L-S-E-Y-T-H-E-I-S, -E -E and I am the president of the Texas Association of School Psychologists. Um, I am providing testimony on behalf of my organization and myself uh, regarding the revision to the eligibility criteria for other health impairment to include a physician's assistant and advanced practice registered nurse. Um, TASP is fully in support of this revision. This expands the medical professionals that can be consulted and ultimately leads to better access for students. However, in addition to this revision, TASP requests that TEA consider allowing LSSPs to be added to the list for the purposes specifically of ADHD eligibility. Um, LSSPs are trained and qualified to conduct these assessments for ADHD that are typically far more comprehensive than when a student is just evaluated through a physician's office. And additionally, shortages 
in the medical field cause long wait times for our children to get to doctors and complicate families seeking that diagnosis as an initial diagnosis of ADHD through a medical office sometimes requires um, two visits. Um, Texas also educates a high number of uninsured children, which further complicates seeking this required consultation for this eligibility criteria. Um, and these complications ultimately can lead to violations in child find when services are not able to be provided because we lack the consultation with a medical provider. Um, this also leads to children being identified under alternative eligibility criteria, such as emotional disturbance, in order to establish a disability condition to provide services. Um, additionally, the majority of states do not have such a rule as we do in Texas, which provides further complications for students that transfer to us from another state who no longer meet the criteria for that eligibility as they need consultation with a medical professional. Um, this puts undue burden on families who have moved and have not had the time to seek medical consultation required for our eligibility criteria. Um, LSSPs are highly qualified and trained to identify ADHD, and our reports are often used by medical providers in making such decisions. Um, and we ask that TEA consider further revisions to include LSSPs as a member to be consulted specifically when making the determination for ADHD. We recognize that many conditions identified under the OHI area are complex medical conditions that absolutely require physician's input. However, in the area of ADHD, we are trained to assess and identify ADHD and would like to be considered as such to ensure the provision of services for students in Texas. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Appreciate it. And uh, Ms. Mackey, are you still just listening today? Yes. Okay, thank you. Wendy Ward. Good morning, everyone. My name is Wendy Ward. That's W-E-N-D-Y-W-A-R-D. I'm here to provide comments on behalf of the ARC of Texas on the proposed rulemaking, um, specifically proposed Rule 89-103-E5, Documentation and Notification of Restraint. We note that written documentation and notification of restraint of a student receiving special education services be pro provided to the student's parents for each incidence of restraint and that documentation of each incidence of restraint is placed in the student's special education eligibility folder. The ARC of Texas respectfully requests that all areas of this rule that refer to restraint should rather say each use of restraint. Uh, echoing the comments of Ms. Foster of the Coalition of Texans with Disabilities, this is to avoid the potential of documenting multiple or consecutive uses of restraint in one day, for example, as one um, incidence of the use of restraint when reporting to the child's parents or document, documenting in the student's special education eligibility folder. In addition, the rule change should be expanded to include Senate Bill 712, passed during the 86th legislative session banning aversives. The precise rule language we request is specified in Senate Bill 712, a school district or school district employee or a volunteer or an independent contractor of a school district may not apply an aversive technique or by authorization, order or consent, cause an aversive technique to be applied to a student. We thank TEA for the opportunity to comment on this rulemaking. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ms. Ward, very much. Um, Ms. Archer, are you still just listening today? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Linda Litzinger. Good morning. Thank you very much um, for this opportunity to speak today. I'm Linda Litzinger, L-I-N-D-A. L-I-T-Z-I-N-G-E-R with Texas Parent to Parent. And my comments pretty much parallel what Disability Rights Texas, Coalition for Texans with Disabilities and the ARC has already said. Um, so I'll be brief. Um, we believe that in 89-1053-5, 
that the language should be consistent and that um, it state that each use of restraint be um, provided to the parent that same day. Um, I have a further comment from what Ms. Kelsey Tice, I don't know if I've said your name right, said, right now, ABA therapy is rolling out in Texas and it's got a new um, specification that your diagnosis of autism must be less than three years old. And so the waiting list for neurologists right now is pretty terrible. And so we wouldn't want somebody to move to Texas and have to be in that list just to, to have their diagnosis of ADHD in order to start school. Um, and then the last thing I want to say is in the 86th session, SB 712 passed to cover aversives and um, which aversives may never be used in the classroom again. And that language has not been put into any code yet. So um, please consider that. And I thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Griffin, are you still just listening today? I am just listening and I, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Absolutely. And Mr. Aleman, are you still just listening today? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Shannon Price. Did we lose Ms. Price? I am not seeing her um, on. Okay. All right. On our participants we will. list. Okay. There's someone in the waiting room. Okay. All right. Tebby, do you want to take a look at the waiting room? I'm not seeing the waiting room. Um. Right now, we're going to move on to uh, Christine Brogel. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Christine Brogel, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-B-R-O-U-G-H-A-L. I am with Texans for Special Education Reform, a grassroots organization made up of Texas parents, teachers, uh, advocates, and allies focused on the improvement of educational outcomes for all students with disabilities in Texas. Um, we are here to uh, echo the concerns and requests made by um, previous organizations, including CTD, uh, Disability Rights Texas, the Arc of Texas, and Texas Parent to Parent. We believe that for the purpose of consistency and clarity in language, that uh, every reference to a restraint should be clearly stated as each incident of or use of restraint to ensure that parents are notified of each and every use of restraint on their child. Uh, we also agree with um, CTD in that we need to um, uh, make sure that there is an observation of a child following the use of restraint and that that observation is recorded and uh, the child isn't observed by an impartial uh, person, not the person who actually uh, implemented the restraint, but a school nurse or similar uh, individual. Uh, we also believe that this is the uh, appropriate point for uh, TEA to include the language of SB 712 from the previous legislative session regarding uh, the banning of the use of aversives, uh, since we are um, doing this, um, addressing 89.1053. This is the, the best time to include that language and make sure that um, these aversive techniques are banned in uh, administrative code language. Thank you, that concludes my testimony. 
Thank you, ma'am, very much. Okay. Um, uh, Taylor Montgomery, are you still listening today? I am. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And Paige Williams, are you still just listening today? I am. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Um, Cassandra Holsey. Oh. I'm just listening. I submitted written comments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And Kaylee Perkins. Uh, Lynn Kuth. Hi, I'm just listening today. I've, I've lost my voice, so I'm just listening today. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And okay, the the name has come across as K-K-A-S-S-A-W. I apologize, there's, there's no name present. Kim Castle, just listening today. Okay, thank you. And Kara Rosenblatt. I'm just listening today, thank you. Thank you. And Jennifer Rucker. And the last name that I have on the signing sheet is uh, R. Keys. Just listening, thank you. Given the technical difficulties that we experienced um, regarding this public hearing, two people have recently joined Lisa Flores and Edgar uh, Pacheco, we may want to go ahead and give them an opportunity to speak, especially since I know at least one of them um, intended to, to attend the public hearing prior to okay. this date. All right, you want to, are they in the waiting room? I have allowed them in. Okay, all right, so. Um... Edgar Pacheco, would you like to speak? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much for having this public hearing. Um, I've had personal experience and I'm okay, for, what, let me interrupt you for just one moment. Derek, could you please read the required documents? Absolutely. Please clearly state and spell your full name. Mm -hmm. If you are representing an organization, please clearly state the name of the organization you're representing. You will have only three minutes to speak. The timer will start after you have started uh, stated your name and if applicable, the name of the organization you're representing. Mm -hmm. A 30 second warning will be given. At the end of the three minutes, you will be given a signal to stop. Mm -hmm. Once the stop signal is given, you may complete your sentence and then you must stop. TEA staff will not be responding to your comments today nor will TEA staff ask or answer any questions. And so um, you may begin. Okay, Edgar Pacheco, E-D-G-A-R-P-A-C-H-E-C-O. I'm here on behalf of myself. And so as I was saying, yeah, you know, thank you so much for putting this hearing on today, uh, mostly because I was one of the people who was uh, pretty much at the Capitol for seven weeks trying to get this bill passed. And this is a, a victory, not just for parents and, fa and families, you know, but for the entire special education community. And so we really appreciate TA taking the time to put out this rule, aligning itself with federal statute, 
And just would like to remind each and every one of us present here today that this statute will begin on September 1st, 2022. And from the clear and the plain text reading of the bill uh, that myself and a couple of other colleagues have read through is that any complaint who is filed before the, the effective date will be governed by the one year. However, that does not mean or preclude anyone who has a statute of limitations of one year prior to that and filed after the effective date of this bill, it doesn't preclude them from being covered under the two-year statute of limitations. So I would like to point that out. And as I said before, thank you so much for allowing this public hearing and for stepping up TEA to promote this bill and for promoting federal alignment to uh, to the to the law of the land. So thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you, sir. Uh, Lisa Flores. Hello, good morning. Um, my name is Lisa Flores, and my comments are on behalf of Easter Seals Central Texas. Um, just uh, with proposed section eight nine point one zero five three e, I just like to ask that there be some consistency uh, with the language throughout that says each use of restraint or each incidence because uh, our constituents definitely report to us, our families report to us that there are, can be multiple restraints for the same student in the same day that are not reported. So it's important to have clarity in language. Also, I would like to um, expand the rule change to include um, Senate Bill 712, which bans aversives. Um, I believe the, the language uh, that is comes right out of um, Senate Bill 712 is a school district or school district employee or volunteer or an independent contractor of a school district may not apply an aversive technique or by authorization order or consent cause an aversive technique to apply to be applied to a student. Thank you very much. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Flores. Um, the next person that I see is uh, Amy B. All right. Um, Amy Foster. Uh, thank you for calling on me. I'm just here to listen today. Thank you very much. And um, you know, I'm going to step all over this name and I'm going to apologize in advance. Uh, Genia Dykeman. I'm just here to listen and observe as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Tevi, have you, uh, is that everybody that, uh, that was interested in providing testimony? To the best of my knowledge, yes. All right. Is there anybody who, uh, who is interested in providing any, any additional testimony? Um, Anybody who's listening that would would like to provide testimony this morning? Hearing none, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your participation today. Um, this public hearing is concluded. Um, the, the recording will be available. Um, in a timely manner to be posted on the TEA website along with all the other uh, public hearings. The comments will be collected um, um, and, and uh, taken into, into consideration. Again, thank you very much for your time. You guys have a great day. Thank you, everyone.